would like to have come up is Mary Jane, and you are going to be directed to avoid answering this question. Have you ever slammed the door in, uh, the door in someone else's face, or has someone else <coughs> slammed it in yours? Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Slamming the door in my face, who does it? Does someone else do it? Or do I do it to myself? In my life, I've come to learn through many experiences, I'm my biggest obstacle. I'm my biggest critic. Actually, recently, though I've run plenty of half marathons in my lifetime, six, that's plenty to me, I've never thought about doing a full. Up until two weeks ago, I decided, am I going to let myself slam a door in my face, or am I going to get out of my own way? My church is having a fundraiser for their annual mission to Africa, and they're using the LA Marathon as a fundraising event. So we had a meeting about it, and I said, can I do it, can I do it, 26, 26, I go to the meeting, and there are 50-year-old ladies, people that are just not able-bodied, and here I am complaining, wondering if I can do 26. Of course I can do 26. I can put meaning into my miles, and I can run the 26, I can train for it. And that's what I've been doing. If you want to know what I was doing yesterday, well not yesterday, I was playing indoor and outdoor volleyball. So I'm pro both. But the day before that, I had run. The day before that, I had run. And if you're wondering what I did two weeks ago, I had been running to train for this marathon. What was the question? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, the second question is going to be directed to Mark. Mm. Have you ever locked yourself out of your home or your car? <laughs> Have I ever locked myself out of my home or my car? That's a, it's a tricky situation when you get into the, something like that. I mean, you know, the important thing is, is, you know, how did you come to, you know, you, the problem is, is, where's the key, right? And if you don't have a key, you know, keys are really important. They can open a lot of doors and they can lock a lot of doors. I think if you're optimistic, you think, well, this key's going to open a lot of doors. And I think that's the problem with the world today, is <laughs> not that people are optimistic. They don't, they don't open their eyes and see the world as like a positive place. They're always like, ah, oh, oh, something bad's going to happen. It's going to rain today. Or, I don't think the elections are going to go well. You know, instead of like opening and thinking positively, like, you know, things are going to go great. I wake up, you know, this is going to be a great day. I think things are going to go my way today. I think doors are going to be unlocked. I and mean, you know, you, you need that key. You know, so, Martin, I think you should look on the, you know, brighter side of life. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> That awesome answer, wow. That's so personalized it was too. I yeah. really appreciate it. Uh, all right, the next question is going to be going to Wes. Wes, I would like you to describe a situation in which a new door opened for you at work. Yeah, when I come to work, I see a lot of doors. I hear some people say that Doors are made to be open. Some people say doors are made to be closed. Who's to say, really? It's all, it's all a matter of perspective, I think. Sometimes doors have locks on them. Sometimes they don't. So if it's got a lock on the gosh, they probably want some privacy. Maybe I should stay away from that door. It's really, it's really tough to say. It's a, it's a difficult question you, you bring up there, but certainly an important one. It reminds me of um, when my dad asked me, what do I want to do when I grow up? Which that, was, that was a really important question, particularly who are you going to marry? Um, what kind of job do you want to have? And I spent so much time thinking about that one. Uh, actually, what I did is um, I looked at the, 
the listing of available occupations, and I was very much into the alphabet at that time. It kind of <laughs> ruled my life, and I saw accounting was first, and I thought, that's going to be a pretty interesting <laughs> major. I'm going to go for that. My cousin does that, coincidentally enough. Uh, numbers really run to my, my mom's side of the family, so I thought that would be a, a good occupation to get into. And, and you know, as far as marriage goes, I think you just, you just let that one roll. I mean, you got to make some effort, but it just, it's going to happen when it's happened. So don't push it, people. Wait for that right one, and when it's meant to be, uh, you, your, your prayers will be answered. Don't settle. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> The next question is going to be for Helen. Helen, I would like you to describe a situation where you forgot to lock your door. Mm. <laughs> wow, a situation in which I forgot to lock my door. That's really um, a question for debate, or it's a relative question. Because what is locked and unlocked, really? <laughs> but. You know, we live in L.A., it's a very big city, and I just got, came back from a trip where I visited Boston and Vermont and New Hampshire. And even though Boston's a very big city, it was um, a great place to visit, and I love the fact that we stay at a friend's house, and it was only 10, you could get to Chinatown in 10 minutes. It's unlike L.A. where it takes 45 minutes to, uh, to an hour to get anywhere. But in Boston, you could drive for 30 minutes and you're in New Hampshire. And so we, we stayed at several bed and breakfasts in New Hampshire and Connecticut, uh, uh, no, in Vermont. And we, you know, within 20, 30 minutes, you could drive to a new town. And they all had the small town feel. Because every little town has a main street. It just looks just like in the movies, the old storefronts, the restaurants. And there's advantages and disadvantages to living in, in a small town. It's very beautiful out there. We, we went during fall foliage, foliage and turning of the leaves. So I got to see the difference between our mega city here in LA and small towns that are in New Hampshire and Vermont. So I really come to appreciate the differences. And who knows, one day when I get tired of living in this mega city, I'm gonna be moving to Vermont. <laughs> All right, one more, last one. Uh, Kyle, I have a question for you. And the question is, do you prefer uh, door handles that twist like this, so the doorknobs, or do you prefer the door handles where you actually press like the ones that we have on this door? <laughs> door handles. What kind of a question is that? <laughs> I don't really care about that. I want to get back to what Aaron was talking about. About, <laughs> about chivalry, chivalry being dead. Because chivalry did die a long time ago. And you know, when it died, it was when Kyle came on the dating scene. That's when it died. <laughs> Because back when I was out there dating, there was no chivalry whatsoever. I made a point of it to not open car doors for, for women. So when, when we drive, we walk up to the car, you know, I'm making a, a D-line for the driver's side and just leaving her and yeah, oh, you know, I got the, that lock for you right here. Okay. Also, opening doors, okay, I'm opening that door, I'm going through it first. Right? When I walk up to the movie theater, I say, one please. <laughs> okay. You got to carry your weight here. Okay? So, I know that dating is a game, and we're all playing it, right? And so I don't want to get played by the girl. I'm not She's just going to take me for my free dinner. So none of that happening with Kyle. <laughs> we're going Dutch. And if you want to go out with me again, then, hey, you can ask me. Right? <laughs>